My name is Kara Gage. I'm from Tahlequah, Oklahoma. A judicial system that refuses to be blind is the type of corruption I'd had to deal with for over five years with domestic violence and family court corruption. Over seven years ago, I married the son of our late state representative. My ex-husband's father served in our state legislature for 26 years and was Speaker of the House for six. Even though he's now deceased and his son is a convicted felon, the system turns a blind eye to many illegal acts. Since my ex-husband is an attorney, he's been able to manipulate the system to his advantage and our daughter's detriment. After two years of marriage in 2007, I filed for divorce and my battle began. I reported everything from his illegal drug use, possession of many firearms, domestic abuse, posting nude pictures of our eldest daughter on the internet, to the powers of be, that be and nothing has been done. I made reports and spoken to two DAs, two assistant DAs in two different counties, the ATF, detectives and police, drug task force, DHS, child protective services, senators, representatives, clergy, counselors, and so many more. I was, however, for approximately two years, granted a temporary protective order. He violated the protective order over 20 times, including shoving me up against my truck in front of our child at the police station and nothing was done. When we finally made it to court in December of 2011, the judge heard our case in chambers with no attorneys present, except of course my ex had himself. My court advocate from Help in Crisis was not allowed to go in with me and there was also no court reporter. The judge refused to hear 75% of my case and even though I did present the hair follicle test that my ex came up positive on, incidences of the girls playing unsupervised by the road, nude pictures he posted to a photo sharing site, and he did hear a recording of my ex abusing me in front of my girls. The judge ignored it all, instead choosing to drop the protective order, telling us not to argue in front of the children, and made my ex the primary custodian. The first time I called DHS, I told them who it was against. I was told, you can tell me whatever you want to, but I'm not even going to write it down. The second and third time DHS was brought into the picture, he successfully, in DHS's eyes, discredited the witnesses, even though much documentation, pictures, and proof were presented to them. They even gave him a warning that they were coming so he could empty his home beforehand. Recently, I filed emergency custody, and even though my ex refused service and didn't show up, the judge once again refused to hear the evidence and instead recused himself from the case. Even though my attorney has received over $30,000 since my family and I ran out of money, he withdrew from my case. I've spoken to 17 other lawyers, two of which they said would take my case, one for $10,000 and the other for $2,500. It might as well be a million. Well, I have my master's degree, I live in a small town, and am basically unemployable. I have my own company and we man do manage to get by. I'm, however, I make less than minimum wage and then sole supporter of my four daughters. While I didn't want to drag mine and my kids into the public media forum, I consider this avenue to be my last resort. I've had to pull my children out of school and am refusing to follow the court's order and turn, return them to my ex-husband. I'm facing contempt charges because my, my children's lives are at stake. While I do have a few witnesses ready and willing to testify, no one in power will do so. I'm begging for your help. Please do not take action when it's too late. My eldest daughter almost drowned this summer due to his neglect. Please do not let my kids become another statistic. You have the power to make a difference. You have the power and voice to be heard. Please help those of us who are screaming in silence.